Hello everyone, um, my name is Ag Stevens. I am the Head of Partnerships at CEDA and I've, I'm here to give you an update on software available on Jasmine. Um, so in the last year, year and a half, we've, we've made some significant changes and some of them have coincided with a general migration to a new upgraded operating system. So we're now running on CentOS 7. Um, and so I'm going to talk mainly about the common software that is available on the Jasmine interactive SI servers and our batch um, cluster, which is known as Lotus. Um, in specifically, I'll talk about our Jaspi environments and another environment called Jasmine SI. Um, I'll talk a little bit then about how you can build your own environments um, and then mention various other things um, related to different types of software that might be of interest. To put this talk into context, um, those of you that weren't with us yesterday may not have seen this diagram before, but um, what we've tried to do um, throughout the online conference is just come back to this diagram that tries to give an overview of our services um, and our sort of hardware situation as well on Jasmine. And so this is all about software and that sits inside our compute services and these are our, our generally available compute services. So if you're a Jasmine login user, you should have access to these. And so we're talking about software typically that's available on the batch system and the interactive system. But I will also mention some things like the um, transfer software, which is relevant to our transfer services. So first thing, we have um, quite extensive help pages now to um, explain how everything works on Jasmine, but we have a, a software on Jasmine top level page, um, which talks through the various ways in which you might want to um, access software and the kinds of software you might want to access. Um, and most people are interested in the um, packages that are made available to do data analysis and that kind of thing. So these are software that, that are installed on the analysis servers or the, the SI servers as they're known and also are available across all the Lotus nodes. We also have tools available for compiling and building software. Um, there is some software that is restricted access. So you have to register for it and it, it may only be available to certain communities. Um, there are some software that's only available on specific servers. And of course, most of you will be interested in getting data onto Jasmine or, or pulling data from Jasmine, and you're dealing with, with large amounts of data. So data movement or data transfer software is also an important part of what we need to provide. So if we jump in and think first about the data analysis software, um, we have a whole heap of Python and other packages that we are now grouping together into separate environments. Um, and we've chosen to use a packaging tool, tool called Conda, um, which many of you will have used or will be aware of as the main package management tool. So Conda is really, really useful um, because it allows us to package a group of um, specific versions of software packages together into something that we call an environment and that environment has its own identifier um, and we can also link that to information about that environment so we've we've called our jasmine python environment jaspi um, and we have a python 2.7 and a python 3.7 environment but we also have different versions of those as well on the right hand side here you can see the sort of packages that are, in, that are included as standard if you log into our um, interactive servers or on Lotus um, and these are packaged within Jaspi. Secondly we have this thing called the Jasmine SI environment and that is essentially things that we couldn't install through the Conda route but we knew that were um, re requested by a lot of users and therefore we wanted to make them available on Jasmine. And so we are installing those packages through um, RPMs 
Um, and our, that, that method was what we used to use um, in something called the Jasmine analysis platform, um, which was the, the precursor to JASPI. So just an overview of what we're trying to provide in JASPI um, based on what the requirements were and, and the, the solution that we are providing. So in terms of reproducibility, um, we think it's really important that any scientific workflows need to be able to reproduce their results. So we, we want to be able to provide a specific set of packages and versions um, from a set of initial requirements. And then we want to be able to maintain access to that set of packages over time. So if you're, if you're doing a set of runs that maybe take three months and halfway through we update our default environments, we'll, we want to be able to provide the ability for you to actually select the previous environment and keep running with that rather than suddenly finding that all the software's changed and the impacts that that might have on your workflow. In terms of documentation, we want to be able to guide users on what software is available and how to access it. And so taking this JASPI solution enables us to, to link to more detailed um, documents and repositories where we say, these are all the packages that made up a given environment and these are all the versions of each of those packages. Um, I suppose as mentioned in, in the first issue, multiple environments are important because users need to be able to potentially access different packages at different versions for different projects. And so JASPI gives us the ability to potentially have um, numerous Python 3.7 environments, all with packages at different versions, all living on the system at the same time. And a really important thing for us is to be able to manage this on what is quite a limited staff resource. Um, so that following the, the Conda model gives us the ability to easily construct, test, deploy and document our, our environments um, and reproduce them for different systems. So the kind of um, environments we have, um, there are a few things going on here. So we've, we've written our own um, software package called Jaspi Manager, which is just a set of tools that wrap Conda um, and allow us to define an initial set of requirements and then run that through Conda to create, build an environment and then be able to redeploy it onto Jasmine and potentially redeploy it elsewhere as well. Um, so we build these environments and then we list all the package in GitHub repositories packages in GitHub repositories. And you can just see an example here of a list of a set of packages and all their versions. These lists get very long because they include the dependencies of other dependencies. So some of our Jaspi environments will have three, four hundred um, software packages listed within them. Of course, from the user perspective, you just want to be able to say um, which, uh, which software environments are available, available, how do I activate them and how do I deactivate them? So this slide is just about using the module command, which many of you will be familiar with on Jasmine, and it gives you the opportunity to search for which environments are available, and then you can load or activate each environment and deactivate it as well. And um, one of the key things here is that you can, there is a default version of Jaspi at any point in time, and you can look that up on our help pages. Um, um, but also you can specify a specific version of an environment. So Jaspi will point to a, a default version, which is 3.7. Um, you can module load Jaspi 3.7, but there's actually revisions which are date stamped um, beneath that. So it's really important when you're running a workflow that you know actually which date stamp version you're working with. So if it, if it gets superseded, you can still go back and select that one to complete your workflow. The Jasmine Sci environment, as I said, was about um, being able to provide other packages that weren't available through the Conda route. Um, and so this is a supplement to Jaspi, and th this provides a number of packages. Um, some of the examples included here are Ferret, LeafPad, NCComp, and XComp. And it's important to know that you can enable both the Jasmine Sci and the Jaspi environments together 
and we have advice on the help pages about the order you should do that in to make sure that all the packages are are found properly by your um, by your session. So of course you you might need to build your own environments as well. And so the simplest approach. Sorry, Ag, you've got two minutes. All right. Thank you. Simplest approach is to build on top of the Jaspi environments. I mean, you can do that with Python's virtual env or vm and install using pip. You can actually bypass Jaspi completely and you can build your own Conda environments if you need to. And it's really important to, to think about where you're installing your environments because your, your home directory is um, appropriate because it's good for small files. Um, if you need to share your environments with other users, then think about using a small files group workspace as we discussed yesterday. Um, we also have help pages that tell you about compilers and parallel libraries. Um, so adv advice is available on using the, the dev tool set um, and using GNU Fortran compilers. Um, and these allow you to compile typically to, to run things like MPI parallel jobs on the Lotus cluster. There's also software that's um, contributed by the community. Some examples here listed that are provided by the Met Office, um, our FCM, Rose and Silk, and Afterburner. Um, so these are contributed in a place where everyone can access them. And we've also been talking to the ESM Valtor community, and there is a, a community installation plan there. So if you have your own tools that you think could be useful in this way, get in contact with us and we can discuss whether this would be an appropriate route. Many of you are involved in data transfer. Um, so we have a nice um, help scout, sorry, help desk article, which, which tells you about this in our help pages. Um, typically, if you're doing quick, small transfers, you might look at traditional Linux tools like SCP and RSync. But we also have access to more sophisticated tools such as Grid FTP, Globus Online. And if you're pulling data from the Met Office um, trans the batch, sorry, the Met Office archive, you can pull it over the Moose client, and there's information on how to do that. It's really important that you use dedicated transfer servers rather than using the scientific analysis servers for transfer work. A few things we didn't mention here. Um, so there are other languages just available on our standard systems. We have IDL installed with interactive and runtime licenses. So there are thousands of runtime licenses if you need to run on Lotus with IDL. And later on, we'll mention Jupyter Notebooks. Um, we've not had time here to mention workflow tools such as Rose and Silk. Um, we have a number of links throughout this um, this slide set, so please refer to those. And here are some of the main help pages that I mentioned. So thank you very much. Um,